Hi, this is Risa. Welcome to my Stitch Along series. In this video, I'll be needle painting a hummingbird from a PDF pattern designed by Elena Kartseva that I bought on her shop Pixie Embroidery Art on Etsy. Link provided below. So here's the PDF pattern and instructions that I downloaded and printed and the instruction comes with the pattern that you can trace and with step-by-step -step guide and images of how to progress in embroidering this piece. Of course, I'm not going to go through all of it. If you're interested, you can click on the link provided to buy this pattern. Now, I decided to reduce the size of the pattern uh, so that it can fit onto a 4.5 inch hoop like so because I had a few extra at home and I'm going to use sort of a veil tulle material for this pattern. So I'm going to just tape the pattern onto the countertop and trace it onto the material here. I'm going to use a heat erasable pen, Frixion, to trace the image. Now, heat erasable is good because, you know, the moment you iron it, you, the pattern lines go away. So that's really convenient. Uh, I must say that tracing onto sort of tulle or netty material is really tough. You have to hold it down really tight and you don't get very clear, fine lines. So you'll have to sometimes run a couple of lines over it. Now here is the pattern that I've traced so these are all of the threads that I bought. The list of threads that you need is in the instruction and I'm going to use a thread organizer to be able to sort out all the threads and it's really easy to then, you know, take out the threads when you need them. Let's begin. I'm going to start stitching the tail of the hummingbird as per the instructions with one strand of thread. Now you can see I am starting the stitch from the front. And instead of creating a knot, I'm just going to stitch a couple of times here on the front and sort of cut off that tail. And the good thing is that with needle painting and with long and short stitches, that initial sort of stitch will be covered by the embroidery work so you won't be able to see it. And you'll see later on that I will end my stitches as well in the same fashion. This has two advantages. One, that I don't need to keep turning the hoop to see the back. And two, uh, because I'm using a transparent material, you won't see any unsightly knots at the back. This starting technique is used a lot in Chinese and Korean thread painting, which I've learned. And I'm gonna adopt it for this piece as well. And here I'm ending off in a similar fashion and just cutting off the tail. Now I'd like to point out here that if you're a beginner with needle painting, then I would highly recommend not using the tulle or veil material uh, and going for pure cotton material and using the same size of the pattern that you would get when you buy the PDF rather than reducing the size like I've done. Um, only because while stitching the hummingbird, I experienced quite a bit of difficulty in trying to see the pattern with this transparent material and uh, was pretty challenging. So coming back to the stitch along, as you can see, I have used a dark blue thread and now I'm moving on to black thread where I'm continuing with the long and short stitches. You can't really see the difference in the color uh, in the video but I'm just essentially following the instructions. The whole pattern follows a long and short stitch uh, technique and so I'm not going to be providing an ongoing commentary for the entire um, video except I'll come in at times when we are changing color. So follow along with me as I stitch the hummingbird. You may start and stop the video anytime at any section of the embroidery project. Here I'm moving on to a light blue shade as you can see and I've started again from the front and again using long and short stitches. Now um, in Asian thread painting uh, they don't strictly follow 
just the long and short stitches. Sometimes you need to sort of fill in the gaps is what I'm doing right here. And you can always sort of stitch over a mistake or to fill in any gaps, especially with working on transparent material or tulle. Um, I've noticed that you see a lot of sort of free space unlike just white opaque um, cotton material so I needed to go in a couple of times to fill up gaps and or light coming through from the back. Here I'm outlining the tail with a single black thread using split stitch and I'm going to just go around each of the feathers to outline it. To finish off the tail, I am going to outline it with a lighter shade and then move on to highlighting it based on the color scheme that is in the instructions. Here I'm moving on to outlining the top layer of the feathers with a purple shade of single strand thread and I'm using split stitch to do that. At this point you may be noticing the light blue stab stitches on the feathers above here. Uh, these are just the start and finish stitches that will be covered by the overlaying long and short stitches so not to worry when you see this uh, they'll all be covered by the final sort of thread work that will be done
Now I've got to the stage of embroidering the body of the hummingbird and you may have noticed that I have turned the hoop facing me and this makes it easier to um, thread paint or needle paint. In fact, um, I should have done that also for the green part of the feathers. Now here you'll notice that I am stitching backwards into the back feathers uh, and the reason I'm doing this with long and short stitches is so that I make sure I insert the needle just under the black outline of the back tail feathers uh, so I ensure that I don't sort of overstitch um, over these black outlines and once I've completed doing that I will resume stitching forward. Here you'll notice that I'm overlaying the dark purple with a different shade of purple. Now with long and short stitches you typically wouldn't overlay threads but in Asian thread painting you do this quite, quite a bit. In fact you have a background shade and then you'll overlay with a different shade of thread. So that's what I'm doing here to blend the colors more evenly as I want it. The good thing with this technique is that you don't need to remove the stitches if you've made a mistake. You can just overlay it with the correct shade of thread.
So here with the eyes, I'm going to just stitch satin stitches with black. And I will then outline the eyes with a single strand of white thread using split stitches, which you will see. And with the beak, again, short and long stitches, sort of tapering until the tip of the beak. Moving on to the wings, I'm first outlining the four wings with simple back stitch, and then I'll fill it in with a combination of satin and long and short stitches. I've completed the purple shading of the four wing and now I'm using a darker shade of a single strand of purple and stitching split stitches to mark out the lines in the four wing.
I've completed my piece, here it is, and now I'm going to show you how to finish off and frame this beautiful embroidery piece. Here I'm stitching simple running stitches after cutting out sort of extra fabric. And once I've completed doing that, I'm just going to pull the thread together so it sort of gathers inwards, like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use E6000 transparent permanent glue and I'm going to use an ice cream stick to apply it onto the inside of the frame, like so here. And once I've done that, I'm going to just sort of fold the fabric onto the glue, like so. So keep applying. Be careful not to apply it onto the fabric because this is tulle and so you'll be able to see the glue on to the other side. Although the good thing is that this glue dries transparent. So you shouldn't be able to see it, but you never know. You may get some dust and dirt on your finger and that might show on the front. So here it is, I've completed sticking it. Um, now to finish off, I like to add sort of a strip of ribbon on the inside just to make it look neat and sort of give it the purple shade of the hummingbird and I'm using fabric fabric glue here. And so just simply apply a ribbon of a similar width. So here I'm using a 6mm ribbon and I'm applying it onto the inside. So here it is, all finished. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification buttons. See you again next time. Bye bye.